Hi, this is Dan Thomas from Dagware.com. This is a tutorial for showing how to animate a three-layer image with Apple Motion 5. We'll be using Apple Motion 5.1. We'll create an animation for a three-layer image to produce a 2.5D effect. This is a companion tutorial to my Secrets Behind the Magic tutorial. Be sure to check out my YouTube channel or website for new tutorials or other videos as they become available. This is going to be quick and to the point, so let's get with it. I'm starting a new motion project with a duration of 9 seconds. The length, of course, is up to you. Our three-layer image is in a Photoshop file. When we import it, we want all the layers separate. So we drag our Photoshop file over the group, but don't release the mouse button, wait for a second for the menu to pop up, then select Import All Layers. I usually get rid of the outside group, just one less thing to think about. Let's add a camera and switch to 3D view. For the next steps, we need the HUD, so open it if it isn't already open. For this image, I want a shorter focal length, so I'm moving the camera closer to the image, to around 65 degrees. Now we want to position the three layers in 3D space. The foreground should be closest to the camera, the background the furthest away. The steps to doing this are kind of strange, and I'll explain the why of it in a moment. For now, just accept that this is how it has to be done. We'll need a side view so we can see where we're positioning the layers. The odd thing is that we also need a window with perspective view, and it needs to be active. I'll show you why in a moment. So we switch to a view that shows at least two windows. One of them should be a side view. Click in the window and zoom to fit using Shift Z. Change the other view to the aforementioned perspective view. While we're positioning the layers, ignore what this window shows. It doesn't help us any when we're positioning the layers. It just needs to be active during this process. Now we need to get the HUD to show the right controls for positioning the foreground layer. So we make the camera layer active, then click on the foreground layer. Sometimes we have to switch back and forth more than once. I don't know why. This is how we want the HUD to look with these buttons. Let's position the foreground layer, here, closer to the camera. We hold down the command key, click this button, and drag the mouse down. This moves the foreground layer towards the camera, as you can see in the window with the view from the right. You may need to click, drag, and release multiple times until you get the right distance. Notice how the layer changes size? That's because the layer is staying the same size as far as the camera is concerned. See these lines? They're the edges of what the camera sees. As we dragged the foreground window closer to the camera, it stayed right up against these lines, so that as far as the camera is concerned, it's the same size. I hope that makes sense. So let me recap what we just learned. If you want the layers to stay the same size from the camera's perspective, you have to 1. Have the perspective view focused and 2. Hold down the command key while dragging. Let's try it without holding down the command key. See how the layer stays the same size? This is actually scaling the image up as far as the camera is concerned, which makes the foreground layer be much larger than the background layer. The same thing would happen if we didn't have a window with perspective view active. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. So remember the steps. Perspective view active, hold down the command key. So let's get back to positioning the foreground layer. Move the layer to wherever seems like the right distance. Experience over time will help with this. Do the same with the middle ground layer, putting it, where else, in the middle. I'm getting rid of the HUD now, just to get it out of the way. Now let's double check that the layer sizes stayed the same. For some reason, they are usually a little off after this. We change back to single window view, and change the perspective back to the active camera. As we click on the foreground layer and the middle ground layer, notice how they're not exactly the right size? I'm not sure why this happens. I guess nothing is perfect. So after repositioning the layers, I always come back and resize them down to the correct size.
Now we're ready to start creating the animation. Here's the steps we'll take. We'll set a keyframe at the starting frame, then we'll move to the last frame and set up where we want the camera to end up. Motion will take care of the rest. Always make sure you're at the first frame. It's really easy to forget this. Click the record button, then change something so a keyframe gets generated. I usually dolly in and out just a little. Now go to the last frame and we'll set up the ending camera position. For this camera move, we're going to dolly in, pan down, and orbit the camera to tilt up a little. I'll just show you the steps. You can play around with the controls on your own later. First, we dolly in. Then we move the camera down, or move the image up, whichever term you prefer. And orbit the camera so it points up some. Okay, we're done with that. I like to turn off the 3D grid when playing the animation because it distracts me. ADD, you know. Let's turn off the record button, move to the first frame, and play it back. Looks about right. If it doesn't, play around with the distance of each layer from the camera, or change the camera move, etc. There's no hard and fast rules for this. It's kind of an art form. Let's see what the camera move looks like from the left. What we're doing is moving the camera in towards the image, moving it down, while tilting it up to try and keep the center of the image in the middle of the frame, more or less. That's pretty much it, except for playing around with the easing, which we'll do next. You may have noticed there was some easing during the camera move. For my purposes, I don't want any of that, so I'll get rid of it here. Show the keyframe editor. Select the camera. Find the transform or transforms we want to change. Look for the curved line. When you click on one of these, its corresponding animation line turns white, making it easier to find. Right-click on the starting node and set it to linear. You can look at the lines to see if anything else looks like it curves, but there's always an optical illusion with crossing straight lines, so just be aware of that. So with that done, we hide the keyframe editor and try playing it again. There it is. No easing. At this point you can share the movie. Don't forget to look at the Render tab of the Share dialog to make sure you use the best render mode. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up if it was helpful. Or even if it wasn't helpful. See my companion tutorial, 2.5D Image Effect, The Secrets Behind the Magic. Also, check out my YouTube channel or website for other tutorials and videos.